this is Mercury Rising and today I'm here to talk to you about Nestle and the Columbia River Gorge. Um, the Columbia River Gorge uh, is where the Columbia River is. It runs between Oregon and Washington here in the Northwest. And Nestle, if you do not know, is actually the world's largest food and beverage company, food company specifically, um, when measured by their revenues. They're also the largest stakeholder in the world's largest cosmetic company, L'Oreal. And just at a quick glance down the list of other companies that they own or brands, um, you'll see Gerber, Cheerios, Nescafe, Toll House, Hot Pockets, DiGiorno, California Pizza Kitchen, and by far the longest list uh, on these brands is under what they offer in water and where they bottle water. Just the in the United States, they sell bottled water under the brands of Arrowhead, Zypher Hills, Deer Park, Ice Mountain, Poland Springs, and Ozakara. Ozakara. And uh, they're proposing basically that they want to put another one of these water bottling plants um, right here into the Columbia River Gorge. Right now they're talking to Cascade Locks. Um, the proposal is that they would be pumping around, not around, probably exactly, as much as they can, uh, 225 gallons of water per minute um, from the spring that is currently being under the uh, currently under the control of the Oregon Fish and Wildlife Department um, feeding the Oxbow fish hatchery uh, which is where we raise our baby salmon that get reintroduced um, they'd also be pumping 75 gallons a minute of well water for, that is uh, would be shared among the municipal the well, uh, the well water is the municipal water for Cascade Locks as well. So a total of 300 gallons of water per minute. Now, we get, generally speaking, a lot of rain in this region. Uh, I believe they said they get 76 inches of rain on average out there. However, as locals will know, this year has been a particularly slow year for uh, water for rain, uh, precipitation in general. We haven't had nearly the snowpack all over the state that we generally do. Um, that means that the runoff from Mount Hood just isn't there. And uh, this is certainly part of a global trend from the looks of it. Right now the East Coast isn't feeling that so much, but the West Coast, on the flip side of that, has been um, overall in a drought. I'm sure many people are aware that California has been in a drought on and off for many years. And the Northwest could follow suit very soon, although we do generally enjoy a lot of water here. Enjoy a lot of water here in the uh, fall and winter months. Um, we just didn't get as much this year. And it's very evident. We had a very early spring. It's gorgeous weather right now. It's the beginning of March. Um, but if a few more years of that and people might start to notice that you know, the lawns aren't so green and the forests aren't so green. And um, the proposed agreement would be, it'd be a 50 year agreement where they'd be signing over the rights to Nestle and once that happens, the local community doesn't really have the right anymore to negotiate back that water right. So if they run into a drought, um, they would just be out, that water. So why is this happening? Basically, uh, as a quote from one of these articles I just read, uh, Nestle's MO is to target small, struggling communities that have lost their resource base and make them deal, make them a deal that it appears they can't refuse, says Richard uh, McNeary, a consultant to Nestle's opponents in McLeod and McLeod in California uh, by Mount Shasta and Chaffee County, Colorado. They don't tell you that most of the jobs are $10 an hour or that you're going to have trucks running through your community 24-7. And indeed, um, I've seen different numbers on this, but anywhere from 110 to 200 trucks per day is what they're talking about coming out of this facility, which would be right on the river, um, which they claim, of course, is going to be silver, green, certified, all of this nice fancy stuff, of course. The largest corporation, the largest food corporation in the world, I'm sure, has the money to put up for that. Um, this facility would only be offering the community of Cascade Locks, a community of just over a thousand people that has been, of course, hit by the recession. It used to be a, a larger logging community, and now it's much smaller. They have a lot of industrial land available. Um, it'd only be offering 45 jobs. 
And again, as this says, it's they're not promising that these are going to be well-paying jobs. And ultimately, it's going to be increasing the traffic and pollution to the area. But I can only imagine that neighbors don't really want to listen to that happening. Um, in addition to just the fact that these are coming, all of this water is going to be leaving in plastic water bottles. Um, which, needless to say, is kind of a fruitless use of resources on this planet. <laughs> but um, to get back into Nestle and details about Nestle, the CEO, Peter Barbeck, is pretty outspoken about what he thinks about water and rights to water. Um, I just listened to an interview he did for Big Think, and he makes a lot of good points, as a matter of fact. Um, one of the points he makes is we will be running out of water long before we are running out of oil, um, which I think is very astute. Uh, he also says that he does believe that there, that water is a human right. He believes that the 25 liters a day that he believes is what each human being should be allotted in order to keep themselves and their homes and dishes and clothes clean in addition to, of course, drinking. Um, he believes that 25 liters of water a day is your right, and other than that, water can't be free. He, are, he makes a very poignant argument that um, in the least developed countries with the people who are the most poor is where people are paying the most money to get their water because there's a lack of infrastructure there. In the richest countries of the world where we've been able to throw money into water infrastructure, we get water for the cheapest, which is absolutely true. Um, the ironic thing about this is what they would actually be paying for the water coming out of Cascade Locks. For example, they will be paying around one-fifth of one cent per gallon. That's 0 .002 cents per gallon. Um, and then reselling it as Arrowhead bottled water for somewhere around $1.40 per gallon. That's a 700% markup that Nestle would be making, that they would be making off of that. Nestle, again, is a Swiss company. This is not an American company. It's certainly not a local company. And why we would be handing over the rights to our water to them, I'm not sure. And that's a 700% markup on something that they're paying less than $200 a day to obtain. Um, so I'm just doing this video to get out some information. Uh, I wanted to make it short and sweet so that people could just get the facts. Um, I'm going to be putting links to everything that I looked up uh, I didn't have to put much research into this to get these facts. I've been doing research on this for quite a while, but just to get the resources for this, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take very much uh, searching for information out there yourself to figure this out. And there is an upcoming vote uh, in the city of Cascade Locks. What I would propose to the city of Cascade Locks is Find an alternative. Find an alternative for your economy that is not Nestle, a supranational corporation who is not looking out for the best interests of the people of your community. They're just not. Look up what Nestle has done in other communities. Look up the six-year fight that it took McLeod, California to get Nestle out of their communities. Even in places where Nestle was told that or Nestle told the community that they would leave if they weren't wanted after they were in there. We're talking years and years of lawsuits and battles in court that cost the community tons of money, and you're talking about trying to throw money at the world's largest food corporation, the owner of Gerber. I mean, it's a losing battle once you let them get their foot in the door. And I don't think that anyone wants to have to start to fight that battle. So if we can do something about it before it has to begin, that'd be great. This isn't just affecting the Columbia Gorge region. Nestle's already made it very clear, for one thing, that if Cascade Lock says no, then they'll go elsewhere. They will go elsewhere in the Columbia Gorge. We have a lot of the precious, precious resource that is water here for now. And they really want in on that. And it's going to affect everyone. And as we move into possibly the upcoming century of overall drought and a lack of water, we really need to be thinking about how we locally manage our resources and how we can better implement infrastructure. How can we take care of our region and not hand it off to these giant corporations that don't have our best interests in mind. So thank you. I take care. And I hope I'll hear from you soon.